Yeah, just a little proof that I'm on the loneliest road in America. In the last episode, I rolled out of Reno and across Nevada on the loneliest road, Highway 50. And this time, I turned my nose up at the uh, small town of Ely and rolled outside uh, looking for some camping. And I started looking towards the hills and realized that there might be some hills at this state park, Cave Lake State Park. And I turned around and rolled into uh, the state park, hoping to get some free camping as I still had a pass. Give it to me, my uh, Jamie from Adventure Glide. He's actually a resident of Nevada and uh, spends a lot of time in these campgrounds, apparently, as he's roaming around exploring the countryside. As I rolled into this campground, my attitude quickly started to change. I started to get a, a different perspective about the area. And once I set up camp, I had already changed my mind about uh, maybe spending some time here instead of just rolling on and that's what I wound up doing. Just took a nice hot shower and about I don't know it's probably two or three minutes from uh, rinsing off and I realized shit I'm taking a hot shower in the freaking desert. <laughs> what was I thinking? Walked outside immediately everything flashed off so I, I got cool real quick but then I realized I gotta find some shade. There's not a lot of shade up here. There is shade. You just have to be able to move to it. So picnic tables in the sun. The uh, hammock is kind of in the sun a little bit and this is a great deal of shade and I just doused myself with some uh, cool water. Uh, the first time purposefully and this next time I was pouring me a, a mug full of cold water and doused the lower half of me so now my crotch and everything feels good though and I, that's the the one thing i've discovered is um uh, in humid climates you don't flash you don't immediately uh dry off when you sweat when you douse yourself with water but out here you do it's it's within minutes so probably i'd say maybe five minutes it's nice cool breeze hot as hell out there it's got to be 90 92 93 95 maybe um, but just get in the shade and everything cools off especially if you got a little bit of what do you call it swamp swamp shirt going on just douse yourself with water pour some on your head Whew. yeah it makes a big difference i mean I, I might as well be might as well be on the island this is nice anyway probably gonna sit around I might uh, go back in the town and get something else to eat. I got a can of chili and some snacks and stuff, but I probably want to want to spend my last night up here. I could cook. I could cook with this freaking uh, picnic table. I mean, there's some good things about campgrounds, um, but you, most of the time they're overwhelming the, the bad things, or they're overwhelmed by the bad things, like the guy down the hill that's got the generator. I think he's gone. I think it's me and one other dude here. Everybody left today except... Maybe one other camper. Um, yeah. If you can just uh, get past the people in the campground. Or, my favorite thing is to have the campground all to yourself. I love campgrounds. I'm the only one there. Especially if they're free. <laughs> Especially if they're free. Or, sometimes I'll, uh, I'll stealth camp in a campground that's closed. Just go around the bars. This place has an incredible view. Just this spot. Everybody else has got a nice view. But this spot has an incredible view. Let me show you. It's very unusual for me to find some bliss in a campground.
I'm right on the edge of Cave Lake State Park in Nevada. And I'm just sitting here wondering why we call it Cave Lake. I'm gonna go check this cave out. It looks pretty cool from here. It also looks like it might be less than 80 to something degrees out here in there. And it's definitely, it's definitely hot today. Well, this looks like definitely a very well used cave. You can see all that black. Somebody has used this for many, many years as a shelter. It looks like it's probably relatively dry too. Maybe not so much in the rainy season, but maybe Maybe there's a place you can get out of the rain. Might be able to have two families in here. Looks like maybe that's where they cook stuff. I wonder if there's any bones in here. I wonder if this has been excavated. It's a little bit cooler in here, mostly probably because of the shade, but yeah, not too bad. After my brief spelunking adventure in the state park, I had to go into town, back into Ely, to resupply, and I decided to do some quick exploration of the town and found some interesting things. You no, know, I didn't want to go too far out of the way just to see a brothel, because I've never seen one <laughs> outside of uh, TV, magazine, and movies. But uh, yeah, apparently this one is the world famous and oldest brothel. 1880 but I wonder if it was called what is it called big four yeah big four ladies yeah I wonder if it was called that back in 1880 let's, uh, let's take a quick look shall we I bet that's expensive. I don't know if I could take 24 hours of massage. Oh, it looks like it's open. Very tempting. I did see one girl out back, in the right behind the sign where that was uh, the old, oldest brothel. Saw a girl back there. I guess there's always somebody on duty. I don't know something, something about uh, paying for sex that kind of. I mean, I guess we all pay for sex, right? Can at least. You know, we pay for it somehow. So I've heard the the the, sick, uh, the saying that. Uh, much cheaper to get a hooker and it probably is but you know it's also a whole lot more fun to, to do it with somebody you care about somebody that likes you as much as you like them which may not happen a lot but you know you can be close you know, if a girl's put down she must like something about you maybe you fed her and gave her some clothes and a nice ring I don't know, something something funny to think about so yeah, I did not expect this. I saw a bunch of tacky stuff in town, but I, I really wasn't thinking that it was, uh, I wasn't thinking broth. But yeah, I did really want to go to, what was it, Mustang Ranch? I passed the town of Mustang, I didn't know if that was Mustang Ranch there, or if that was just Mustang. Anyway, yeah, it's kind of tacky. But at least, you know, look for the only red building in town, and you can find the lady. Pretty funny, interesting. Let's see what else Peely has. You know, as I rolled around Ely, the town that I had completely dismissed because the last time I came through here it was very hot 
and they seemed very unwelcoming. Uh, they did not provide any source of water in their nice park. Uh, the library was closed. just seemed like uh, it was a very unwelcoming town, and I just decided to keep on rolling. And I completely intended on rolling, uh, continuing rolling well west or east, back east across the state into Utah until I found this railroad station and saw the steam engine smoking over there and thought, this could be a bit of a spectacle. I wonder what's going on over here. So I decided to get off of the bike and uh, roll over here and watch the train move for a little bit. It took a while for it to start moving, but when it did, oh boy. As far back as I can remember, I've always been a history guy, so I've always appreciated the way things used to be, and I've always enjoyed studying and learning about our past, and I think it's quite sad that so many Americans, at least, don't care about the past and where we've been and maybe where we're headed. Um, I think there's the old axiom, uh, if you don't understand history, you don't understand uh, where we're going something like that I, I can't remember how the phrase is but uh yeah like i said i've always been a history guy but i've never been a train guy really up until recently when i started doing some research on a local mine uh train in the uh in the brookwood area where i actually live and then i become a train guy really quickly and uh ever since i've kind of been fascinated by trains steam technology and transportation with these wonderful old beast i just had a real blast sitting here watching the train kind of wished i could have ridden on it but i bet the tickets were pretty expensive It was quite amusing spending some time here watching the train come and go and made me uh, fascinated with uh, with the old technology and how things have changed. I think it was probably 70, 80 years ago uh, diesel engines started taking over and uh, replacing these old steam giants. Uh, cleaner, more efficient, um, but yet uh, all those days are gone. It makes you think with the new technology or were we better off then not to mention the conductor the chief engineer had this cool ass car that i parked by and the only reason i know that is the sign <laughs> is reserved for this cool uh conductor's uh car and he left his windows down so i could stick my camera in and i felt pretty comfortable with that because uh i just saw him roll away on the train but yeah just a nice day of uh nostalgia and pondering the way things used to be i just think it's really cool uh, and this is a beautiful example just like that train of how things used to be so it was a good 45 minutes just kind of sitting around i wished i would have gone into the museum now someone's trained yeah I got because it. then the, it's all you have field. a cluster yeah yeah it's a field because the the powder could be here right so then i have to put all the powder through this little hole right. and try and get it to ignite here or i have to right poke there. the tin foil and just ruin the whole thing it will fall back and stub your toes you got the other yeah. all right we got this in case you haven't figured this out yet, this uh, this is the park ranger that's actually loading a real cannon that's about to uh, be fired. And uh, I was actually reluctant to post this video because I was afraid uh, some Karen might see this and go, Oh my God, the park ranger, he's one of our employees of the state and oh my gosh. And you know, I don't want to see this go away. I would like to see more of this. So, you know, just... Uh, with what's going on around America and you know I'm sure it's okay to uh to change the sex of your six-year-old child but not 
cool for them to see a cannon live fire. So anyway. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> we ready? Yep. yep. Yes, sir. Fire up, boy. Oh, Steve, okay. Fire no. Oh, oh. Hope we're not at war. Oh, it's a dud. Okay, get ready. Woo! Woo! Hell yeah! <laughs> Next time, I roll out of camp and into Utah and have some technical difficulties with the motorcycle. See if you can guess what happened. <laughs> that was rough. <laughs> if I can't get it in neutral, I gotta stall it. <laughs>